Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bowlers Union podcast. Uh, Keith and I here as usual. And joining us today, we have a special guest, current T20 champion, Gloucestershire's Josh Shaw. How are you doing, Josh? Yeah, all good. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for having me. Should be should be good fun. Yeah, no, we're excited. We know we know you're you listen to a few of our podcasts as well, so we're quite keen to find out uh, who you prefer out of me and Keith, and which is your favourite episode. <laughs> yeah, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Sorry, Josh, we had a few technical issues there, which I'm sure are, I'm sure were my fault. So I apologise for that. Um, but yeah, as as I, as I said there, you you've listened to a few of the podcasts, and uh, I bumped into you earlier in the year, and you said how much. You enjoyed it, so that's always always nice to hear, and we're really pleased to have you on. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Yeah, we um, so basically me and my flatmate Miles Hammond, any away trip, you know, Gloucester a bit struck for cash, so there's not many coaches, so we've got those on to to kill an hour or two in uh, in the car journeys. Now it's all all good fun, and yeah, we we enjoy listening to them. So you, know you live with uh, you live with Miles? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so I moved in it. When did I move in here? Probably eighteen months ago, but moving out shortly, just bought a place. So Hammond kind of. I've had to put up with him or he's had to put up with me, which whichever you take. So, yeah, I've been with him for a while. But nice and easy, literally on the ground, roll out of bed on a four-day, top of your mark and go again almost. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Do you know Sorry, what I will Keith. say is um, I do miss the old uh, pairing up in a car. Me and Wright used to, we share lifts all the time, yeah. um, which were quite good fun. We'd always have, like, certain services we stop off at. And, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was quite good. Being on the couch is a bit long, a bit boring. Although you do get to play a bit of cards now and then, hustle yeah. with teammates with a bit of poker. Me and right, you do anyway. Yeah. I mean, we we don't get many. We probably get the odd one, maybe Kent away, maybe for the T twenties in Sussex. But that's about it. We don't get we don't get many. But no, it's all it's all good fun until he starts falling asleep, which he, he usually does. Mm. Yep. Yes. You know, funny trying. enough. Funny enough, right? Used to do that. So what I do <laughs> is I slam the brakes and then shout as loud as I could. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember falling asleep. I, I've but, still got a video of it on my phone. <laughs> have you actually? Yeah. Well, well, I tell you what, I, for some reason, obviously I've played at a few counties now. Um, yeah, Middlesex, where I started, were, were drivers because it wasn't practical for everyone to meet in the same place. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like everyone's yeah. living all around London and it's carnage. So you yeah. pair up and drive. Um, I remember driving, used to drive Boyd Rankin around in my 4K8. It was, I don't know what that must have looked like. <laughs> that must have been um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Essex, Essex was always a coach, but Chelmsford is obviously a bit smaller. So people yeah. would, you know what I mean? And actually, yeah. we used to watch just in between us, like relentlessly yeah. on the coach. Uh, Warwickshire, me and you used to drive, didn't we, Keith? And actually, yeah. the freedom you get from driving is like, yeah. is cool. Um, yeah. Only, t- only thing would be annoying with right is he'd use his kids' car seats as an excuse as why he couldn't drive. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just didn't want to get them out of the car. He's like, oh, kids' car seats. Can we yeah. take them? Sorry, mate. Right. Can't drive. Sorry. Right. So th- this is an interesting point here. So I don't know if we've actually talked about this yet. Is you at uh, Keith has a thing for cars. So I don't know if any of the like, <laughs> listeners or whatever viewers know this. So it was always fun because it would be like a different car every away trip. Do you know what I mean? You'd be going, you'd have an X5 once. I remember you had the, the XF Jag, you had, you've had the GLE, you've had the, the full oh, focus RS. Do you know what I mean? You had a lot. <laughs> so you can you see where I'm coming from. Yeah. You've done well to remember all those to be fair. <laughs> Although yeah, there was a time, I, I don't think it's been mentioned on the podcast, right? He was looking for a car because I bought quite a few. Me and him went to a BMW dealership to look yeah. at a car <laughs> and i pointed out a good car for him so i'm trying to help him out and getting a deal yeah but he's like oh thanks a lot you know what? i'll go away and i'll have a think about it the guy emails right the next two days later and it's like oh um have you and your partner thinking me and right here <laughs> together <which> is... <laughs> yeah. you and your yeah. partner had a thought on the price yet um yeah terrible that is brilliant we uh <laughs> we used to do quite a lot of stuff not quite like that but we like we go away for like room, you know, get room service or whatever, wouldn't we? It would be like me, you, Jonesy, Rick, got Clarky and stuff. Yeah. And if it wasn't up to scratch, we'd we'd send you, wouldn't we? We'd get you on the on the blower to make complaints because you've got that kind of. Hey, no, nah, it was more Clarky more than anyone. I remember at London, where oh, was it Somerset? Food took a while, and he made them give it us for free, and then he <laughs> drinks afterwards for free as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the minerals to do that. I'm just like, everything all right? Yeah, it's all good. Cheers. Thanks, you know, yeah, no. Nah, do you know what? Funny enough, Clarky once almost got this this uh, 
this guy sacked because right he, he'd asked for a pint of milk and he hadn't got it quick enough. <laughs> I remember that. Was that that was in that was at the Danubus, wasn't it? Oh, at brilliant. Was it at yeah. To be fair to him, the guy was quite rude to Clarky when he asked, like, can I have my yeah, you know, I've been waiting a while, so yeah. Don't mess with him. Anyway, we could go on with stories as loud. Yeah. I, w- I wanna before I start my little quick fire question, can you tell me why your nickname is the Bucky? Oh, no, that's a good one. So I like to have all my things in order. It's not because I love, love gambling or anything like that. I um, all my boots are in order. Session one, two, three. Kit bag, nice and tidy. Bit bit old school, bit anal, but yeah, that's why. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's yeah, cool. That's, I love that's, that. Nothing wrong with that. That's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. Right, we'll we'll get into it then. Yeah. First, quick five questions. Swing or nip? Uh, nip. Pace or bounce? Uh, bounce. Oh, Nick off or bold? Uh, bold. Back of the hand slowy or knuckleball? Oh, uh, back of the hand slowy. Oh, interesting. And good bouncer or good yorker? Uh, good yorker. Right, run us through. Why nip? Uh, I just, I think, obviously, swing, swing is great if it's late swing, but if it's coming out of the hand, it's quite easy. To see, and obviously nips only when it comes off the pitch, and that's probably six meters, five meters away from from the the bat or the pad. So I think that's obviously the hardest to hardest to defend. Um, but yeah, I mean, swing's obviously great, but I think just nip. You look at the bowlers around around the traps, mainly nip bowlers are getting all the all the poles. So funny enough, um, we had I forgot the guy's name. Is it uh, who aerodynamics swing? Mm. What's he called, righty? Um, Aaron. We had Aaron on. Uh, and he was saying there's no difference of... There's no such thing as late swing. It's, yeah. it's all just what deceives the, what the batter deceives as being late swing. So I think it's more about your angle. Just so you're aware, that's all. Just so you're aware. Um, but I myself... Well, you listen to the podcast, John. <laughs> I've obviously miss, missed that one, obviously. <laughs> that was my um, you know what that was my favorite episode actually uh, mainly because keith sort of ducked out early but it was a <laughs> it was a it was a good episode like his his theories there was a few a uh, few bombs dropped weren't there but anyway we'll, we can get back to that sorry oh, yeah. keith. um then you chose pay uh, you chose bounce over pace yeah i just i just think the the amount of times you see well it happened to me a couple of times where you've, well, you've gone for somebody with a bit more height a bit more bounce um, and obviously at Bristol, you probably do need that on the quite slow, low wickets. A bit more bounce probably probably would help. And I think it'd help everywhere in England, to be honest, I think. As long as you're still hitting the stumps, of course, I think it would it would still, it would help, definitely. And then you yeah. uh, chose bold over being nicking off bowlers? Yeah, I just think it just, yeah, it just makes a better sound, doesn't it? If you make the off stump castle out the ground or whatever, it just, just feels a bit, bit better than a nick off. You also then take the... Keeper and slips out of play just in case the the shell. Yeah, there's nothing worse than that. And you've got to yeah. try and keep a, a nice like oh lucky. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you sleep down, you spew yeah. it. Yeah, you um, spew it. Back of hand slowly over a knuckle. Yeah, I just think my, like if you get the team. I know not many people ball seam up in T20s really these days, unless it's the back end for Yorkers. But if you get that team coming down straight, like they can't. They can't tell the difference whether it's pace on or or not. I think you can you can do them like a kipper. I think there's nothing better than you just get one straight up, straight up to the court and bold or edge of the ring sort of thing. Okay, and uh, good Yorker over a good bouncer. Yeah, I just think I that's my go-to. I think um, almost in white ball cricket. I just think if you bowl a bumper at anyone, all it takes is a top edge. You can get lucky. It can go anywhere for six. Whereas at the end, if you if you nail a Yorker. Pretty much, it's not going. It's not going anywhere really, unless they get a, a little nick on it. But yeah, I'd say a, a good Yorker over a good bumper. Interesting. I, I know Righty definitely, and I'm kind of the same as Chris. I prefer to see someone just get rattled off the lid than <laughs> yeah. dig out a very good Yorker. I, I do enjoy doing that, but also you're not going. That's not getting them out, is it? If you're donging them on the head, but I think yeah, but it, it, it kind of is in a sense. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a little bit of win. It feels, yeah, it's a win, yeah, it's, it's definitely a win, but I just think, me thinking white ball, back end, I mean, it, all it, can, anything can happen with a, with a bumper, whereas a good Yorker doing well to do anything with it. So, funny enough, actually, we'll, we'll stay on this just quickly. A bouncer bought me a wicket the next time I played a game, which Wrighty knows about. 
a good a quick bouncer it was, wasn't it, Chris? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To be fair, yeah, yeah, it surprised everyone. Um, who was it against? Uh, uh, sorry, who was batting again? Vian. Oh, Vian. Yeah, Vian Mulder. Um, he came into bat, and we've been told by uh, Paul Nixon mm -hmm. and our head coach, "Look, do not bump him. He's very good on the short ball." And I hate hearing that. I, I at least wanted yeah. to surprise. Just do it once, kind of. Yeah. At least prove I can do it. Yeah. Um, and I thought I'm not going to do it once he's got in. I'm going to give him first up. Yeah. Give him a quick bouncer, which is quicker than what I thought it would be. Yeah. Then we played him in the final, and I got him out maybe second ball. Yeah, um, LBW, and we chatted after at the bar, and he said he was expecting a bouncer. <laughs> really he said nice. he was shocked at how quick it was the my bumper. So he was like, "I've got to be aware of his bouncer." Yeah. So you know, it I... can buy you a wicket. I almost, I almost yeah. ripped his lid off as well. To be fair, so it was, you know, it, it can buy you wickets, bouncers. Don't be shy. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not shy of bowling it, but especially when, especially in a in a white ball game, I'm just a bit too risky. So I almost forget about bowling it, to be honest, a little bit, in, especially in, in white ball cricket. I think I almost went, I might have bowled maybe two or three the whole T20 20 campaign this year, um, just because I think it's just potentially too risky. It doesn't mean, if there's any batters listening, it doesn't mean I won't be using it next year, potentially, just in case. <laughs> just you're, you're right. It's... Uh... You're onto a bit of a hiding for nothing in yeah. in T20 with a with a bouncer. Yeah. I think it's great in the middle of a 50 over game, isn't it? Yeah. It's such yeah. a good ball. But like yeah. T20, when quite often you've got one, if not both, of the the man fine leg up. It's like yeah. yeah I mean, was, I was, uh, I was great. looking when I was at Yorkshire. Uh, Liam Plunkett was still there, and he was obviously great in the 50 overs during the middle. And he was like, you just have to use your two. Every over is like just use your two because otherwise they're just going to stand there, and especially these days they just try and hit everything for four or six pretty much. He was like just use your two, might get you a wicket, but might get you a dot as well. So it was mm. just that kind of going going on from when he said that. I was like that actually makes quite a lot of sense really. So something I, I picked up on. That's that's brilliant. Obviously we just talked about bouncing. You mentioned T twenty stuff, so I'd like to go straight into that. Yeah, talk us through your the competition for the for the Gloucester squad of going on to win it had were you guys confident from the start or was it you built momentum and started to believe more as you went on yeah i mean it's obviously the classic when you sit down at the start of the, camp, the campaign everyone's like oh, we can go on and win this and we've not there's not been a ball bowled yet and then we were i think we were one from five um and we, we weren't looking great so i think at that point pretty much every game is almost like a knockout game isn't it when you've not started off great and you've got to you've got to find a bit of form and luckily we did i think we one of the we got a we got a tie at Surrey, which I think everybody was expecting us to go there and get folded over pretty much. And we we stood up to them and got a got a tie. And then we we were winning games we shouldn't have really won. And then on the flip side of that, we were losing games we we should have won. So it was an interesting campaign, really, to be honest. But I think everyone was always confident. Um, I think the the biggest boost of confidence was that quarter final against Warwickshire, where we. I almost did like a classic old Gloucester, just squeeze them, squeeze them to death, and we did that and won pretty comfortably. We've only won, I think it was it one thirty nine on the board, I think it was. Um, and then yeah, just going into, yeah, into into that finals day, we we turned up the day before. Um, lads did a bit of training, and we we saw the wicket, and we're like, this is pretty dry, like almost like a Bristol deck for T twenties. And we, we were quite lucky because we obviously had this second game. Um, so we were going into that and, and looking what was happening. We were like, this is a Bristol wicket in finals day. So we've, we've almost hit the jackpot, really, for conditions being in our favour. Um, you know, and then throughout, all the way throughout the campaign, we've started well, whether it's been bat or ball. And we, we did it pretty well on finals day. You know, I think, what did we lose? Four wickets and ball both teams out. I think it was or something like that. I mean, Jack yeah. Taylor and Ben Charles, who can give it a good thump, didn't even have to think about batting they were just specialist fielders in the in the finals day which was which was pretty strange and surreal really if you just spoke to us at the start of start of the finals day or start of the campaign that you're gonna bowl both teams out and, and only lose four wickets. Do you know what yeah. I would say there's no better match for a bowler than to not even have to consider putting your pads on. Yeah. Just yeah. to bowl <laughs> good. Good. lads knock it off. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, so happy. Yeah, well, well, like, here, in, like white ball cricket, especially, it's almost like, yeah, I 
white ball is just a massive like it's almost rude that you have to bat isn't it do you know what I mean yeah. especially for like one over at the end of a T20 you're like yeah. Jesus yeah well you, there's just one outcome isn't it you're either hitting a boundary or you're just out so it's just, yeah. like, or you start you, running two yeah <laughs> you watch the um, the rerun of all the path finals then there's been so many like nippers in there I think the one that stands out was the Harmer was it against Worcester like 2019 maybe and he was Last ball hit a four, four to win it or whatever it was, and I was like, if that comes down to this, I'll, I'll be niffing a little bit. But look, didn't even get anywhere close to putting my thigh pad on or anything like that. So it was great. Oh. Um, fast forward it, well, rewinding then back to the beginning of that. You said you'd won what one in five. Yeah. Was there a change in approach, or did you just recognise, you know what, we're doing the right thing? T twenty is kind of volatile. We're gonna yeah. keep. We're gonna keep going in the way we are. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Or did you change something up? I think I think the start of the year, um, obviously Mark Elaine came in from um, Benkenstein last year. And I think we, we we in years gone by, we've been told us to try and basically get as many as we can. Whereas um, Boo Boo's now down the line of actually you need to consolidate a bit more than you think. And it's not all gun ho like everybody thinks. And I think... We were probably adapting to that a little bit at the start of the campaign, I think, potentially. I mean, we've not there was no big sit down, have a chat about reinventing the wheel sort of thing. We we just said, look, just go out and back back what we're doing and we we should come good. And luckily for us, we did. I mean we I don't know, we, we just everything seemed to click at the right time when we needed it to. Um even the last right at the last game we needed to win um, and then it was, I think Hampshire, did Hampshire have to lose? Um, and Essex beat them the last game, so we went through, um, got through on net run rate, and everything just seemed to, yeah, everything just seemed to click at the right time, but there was no big sit-down meeting about, oh, look, we need to do this, we need to do that. I think it was it was basically just our, just keep trusting trusting what we're doing almost. And I know you've said that, that was with the... Or from what it really sounded like, it was like from the batting point of view, from bowling, was there anything that was changed or was it just keep doing what we're doing? No, it just it basically just keep doing what we're doing. We were taking wickets in the power play and we were getting off to decent starts. Um, there was a couple at the back end where they got away from us. Um, but there, it was no like standout area where we were really underperforming. I think I think we, we had a big meeting in Cardiff last week about um, just wrapping up the season, basically. And I think we were almost leading power play bowlers i think that might need to get edited at the end if we're not but i think we were i think we were the leading power play bowlers and i think as a group i mean you look you look at our team and you think well there's not many superstars in there but there's one thing we do is all we're all pushing the right direction for each other there's no like individual performances in there everyone's pushing to do the right things same with even in the field and with with the bat We've not really got many superstars and people probably underestimate us a lot which probably helps us out i think what uh, you mentioned about power plays, are you happy or able to share what, as a bowling group, is your philosophy in a power play? Do you, uh, do you just hold length as best you can or you do you vary it a lot from the start or like what's your kind of vibe? Yeah, so for, for me individually, I've, I've got my deep point and deep square leg um, looking to swing it. So obviously it's almost... Yeah, I think you've had somebody on before talking about this. It might have been Dorf, I think. He was saying, oh, you want to get hit to certain areas. Um, obviously, trying to run up and swing it. My man protecting that is the deep deep point man. But then I know if, if the batter goes the other way, gives himself a bit of room, I'm just going to try and hit him as hard as I can on the thigh pad. And my deep square should be able to look after that. Um, so I think we were just clear on where we wanted to get hit through, all throughout the start, middle, middle and the end. Um, I think that, that helps for me. I think I'm not, yeah, your first over, you might be, yeah, you might be trying to nick somebody off or trying to get them out. But after that, I'm, my thought process, process is how are they not going to score a run? Well, how can I stop them from getting, getting a boundary pretty much? Um, whether that's basically hitting the thigh pad, slow ball or hole, I'm just trying to make sure they don't, don't get any runs and almost just taking it, away from me and if I walk away with one for in the game I'm happy or even non for but I've got a decent economy rate and I've helped the lads out as much as I can I think that's that's all I think that's mainly all we're all trying to do pretty much I think everybody forgets personal personal achievements and we're just all in it 
for the same thing, I think, just to help each other out, I reckon. With that, did you find that you, you guys had set roles or did you boys have, like, was there certain death bowls all the time or certain people who opened the bowling or did you have to mix it up? Uh, so I didn't, I didn't start the first couple of games, but when I came in, it was then pretty clear that I'd bowl the second and then around the fourth or fifth over. And then Payne always takes the first one and then Matt Taylor would follow me and it would work out where everyone basically bowls pretty much the same overs in the power play. Um, and then uh, through the middle, it was quite flexible depending who was in, if they'd lost a lot of wickets. But at the end, it was, yeah, I mean, Matt, I think Matt had bowled around the 15th, somewhere around there. And then we'd basically just do shadow the power play nearly. Payne would finish off, I'd do the, the the second last almost. There was one game where it all went a bit peaked on when I bowled two flat ones at Somerset and we had to get the spinner on in the last over. <laughs> um, which, yeah, I think... I then I, I missed, missed the last over um, a game later, understandably, because I think they were a bit like, what if he does it again? I, uh, I have a feeling that was tactical by you, mate, at some extent. Uh, sure. Well, it cost me far too many runs if it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah Green has found those flat ones quite nice to, to get under. Um, but no, yeah, I think everything um, pretty much went right the way through. Um, I reckon if you look at the trends, it'll be pretty much the same where we all bowled, yeah. Um, the, the guys you mentioned there, I, I did do a little bit of digging. Uh, so you you got 19 poles, but the the other two, you've got your Matt Taylor and your David Payne, both have phenomenal uh, yeah. tournaments as well. So that's, a, that's an amazing effort to have three bowlers all take basically 20-plus wickets, isn't it? Bowling at the, yeah. in the power plays. Um, and I, I'm assuming... You, you guys talked about the importance of power plays. I think that's pretty well known, isn't it? That if you win power plays, you win T20 matches. I'm assuming that's something that got brought up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's obviously, again, if, if you're not taking the polls, as long as you're restricting them, um, and then once you know once the power play is done, you can then send the scouts out. Yeah, they might have a decent platform, but if you've then got the scouts out and they've not got many, many runs on the board, it's almost it's a win for you a little bit as well. They might... But then also they might think actually it's a, it's a little bit of a win for us because we've not lost any. But you know I think with with the bowling that we've got in the middle as well, I think it's it's always hard, especially at Bristol, for teams to come out and and try and attack like they would at uh, their home grounds. I think I think Surrey absolutely hate coming here if they could call it off at the start of every season. I think they would be they'd be more than happy to to do so, which is it's pretty funny. But then you know I think. I think obviously the power play is is vital, but I think also at the end we've we've done really well at the end to to cut the the scoring down to a minimum. Really, um, I think having somebody like Payne in our attack is absolutely vital because he just seems to bamboozle everybody at the end every every game. It's it's quite funny to watch when you stood at short third man. It's you see him swinging and missing every ball. It's it's good fun. Yeah, he's he's you know. I mean, he, he, I don't know if I would have played against him when, when we were really young because he, he's a Dorset lad, isn't he, originally? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think he played for Bournemouth or something like that. But he's, he's become a phenomenal bowler. Um, yeah, obviously. And he's played around the world now, hasn't he? Which is, yeah. and done well, which is obviously great to see. Um, can I, I want to refer back to what you said about the batting. So yeah. there's a, a statistician analyst or something i don't know what the title would be called dan weston actually right i don't know if you've heard of him but you definitely have um who He's would literally brilliant. completely disagree with what you've just said about uh just keep going just get as many as you can which yeah. is why i love the fact that you've you've got a former uh player coach come in dave elaine not mm. Dave Lane. I play with Dave <laughs> Lane at Middlesex. Mark Lane. Um, really. He he's saying you don't always need to go out there and get two hundred on the board. There's no. you can win with one forty, and sometimes yeah. you have to old school, but you have to yeah delay your you know delay your death period to the last couple of overs to get a score <laughs> on the board. Um, I think um, a lot of older players probably love hearing that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than just swing. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. funny because we obviously had. Um, Benke last year, who was was obviously a great coach, but he was like T20s. He was like, I, he, he came back from the, the SA20 and it just seemed like he was like, right, you just need to go out and hit six at every ball. It obviously sounds sounds pretty easy, but the reality is it's very hard. Um, yeah. I, I think we, we might have got a little bit carried away 
um, in years gone by by doing that. And then we've almost gone back to where we were um, on the doors. And obviously now Mark Lane's come back in, he's kind of got us back into that mould of, yeah, we, you can defend a low total. You just have to do it, you have to do it pretty well. Um, and I think that's what the lads have been used to. The, the other standout is that uh, 2015 final against Surrey in the 50 overcome. I mean, I think they defended something stupid in that game as well, pretty pretty low scoring. So it's obviously in the identity of, of the team and the club. So I think you know, if, you, if you're good at it, why, why go out there and try and smack every ball for four or six? Yeah, I do remember there was a stat, this was going back some years now, but T20, what was it, right here, the first, whoever had lost the least amount of wickets in the, after the first six, the, the chances of them winning was like 70%, 75%, something like yeah. that. Um, I know the game's yeah. trying to move on, but I do think wickets in hand from a, a batting side is really important. Yeah. There's nothing worse, an issue's happened to myself, I'm right, when we were playing in T20 games, there'd be such a demand on taking wickets, which obviously you want to, but at the same time, I was almost at the kind of, if I can ret like kind of restrain them to just a low yeah. score, yeah. that's almost a bit of a win rather than trying to chase getting their wicket. And then before you know it, you've gone for an extra 10, 15 yeah. of it, runs more than what you should have. Yeah, because I, I feel like when you're going out there chasing wickets, you end up leaking more runs anyway. Yeah. Um, I know we, we had a chat, I can't remember, it was early in the year, we just lost a four-day game and I think... 180, something like that. And the bowlers had a chat chat after and we were like, oh, we, we just had to go searching to try and get wickets. They only had 180 to to get and we, we felt like we needed wicket. And actually, on, in hindsight, we then sat down a couple of days later and Payne, Payne was in on the chat and he was like, hey, look, we uh, we understand what you mean, but we've how we've won in the past is by being boring. We've basically bored teams out. And then that almost, I don't know if that kind of kicked on then from that that meeting really that that's how we went about everything pretty much um because especially in the power play if you're searching for wickets it's so hard we've only two out mm. you know, you, yeah. you're up against it more more times than you're not really yeah yeah i totally agree i feel like that's um that's just not really unfortunately as much as you want to believe you can just take wickets yeah. that's not quite how it works Very, like maybe once or twice a year you might feel that good um if you're like a mere mortal where you got it yeah. doing all sorts and on a string yeah. but um yeah yeah well, okay. I'd, yeah I agree. Um, i'd like to ask you a question of because I, I, i've seen your stats and i i watched you both i've played against you before and i, I think your stats probably don't you deserve better stats than probably what you've got but I, I, have a feel, I know why that is. And it's because you play at probably the deadest ground in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but before we get into that, there was a really dead game we played in which I think we ended up, Hampshire ended up winning. But I don't remember a few years ago. Say that again. Was that the game at Cheltenham? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going away from the cricket side of it. I'm coming to, towards lunches. Uh, Where, yeah. A block of cheese and lettuce. Have they upgraded the the lunches there a lot? Because that was absolutely dreadful. <laughs> yeah, that was. You brought this up in one of the podcasts before. I remember you saying, "Yeah, the lunches were that bad. You're all on Uber Eats." Yeah, um, yeah, they have. They've been uh, upgraded by a long stretch. Yeah, they're very, very, very good now. After COVID, they weren't they weren't great up there. But yeah, Cheltenham um, Cheltenham teas are now pretty pretty good. Yeah. It wasn't right. It wasn't even like mature cheddar. It was just like basic mild cheddar yeah. and, and was, just a big, huge block. And, I can imagine uh, the, the type. And it, was, it was boiling <laughs> hot. Everywhere. It was boiling hot. It was like <laughs> running up, like as well. They had the they had the nets at the end of the square, so you're running literally running, like concrete. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> dreadful, and the yeah. wicket was dead. There was nothing. Yeah. Well, we were we were dead set for a draw, and I think one of the Price brothers either smashed it into short leg and it popped up caught. Yeah. From then we just folded. But no, yeah, I remember. I do remember that game. That was a. They usually they can be quite dead there, but you, they used to have a good bit of bounce and um, bounce and pace in them. But I think the last couple of years they've been a bit slower. I don't know, I don't know why that is. So you've got the two squares there, haven't you, as well, at Cheltenham? So you like run up from one square. If yeah. you get hit straight, it's like you've got. No. There's no chance. It just skips no. off. 
It's um, um, during a T20 fielding at 45 or short third is an absolute nightmare because he just skips over the footholes on the college square and you're just diving everywhere. It's yeah, uh, it's not much fun. So uh, <laughs> come on, I know so what you mean, by the way, Keith, about those potatoes. Do you remember? Do you remember back in my like tea drinking prime? I used to have like a yeah. like this vacuum pot where it, you basically place it on things and then the tea would come out the bottom yeah i came back in once and my my uh my special vacuum tea pot thing was just full of the boiled potatoes that you're referring to so i just basically so i basically just ruined it and it completely killed my uh my thing because it tasted of basically cold stale potato for forevermore <laughs> Sorry, can, you my, can you hear my dog, by the way, in the background? My dog is absolutely on one today. I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to no, mute no. my mic and I'll, I'll be get him in because he's doing my <laughs> head in. <laughs> I'll, uh, going back to what I was saying, obviously, we're going away from the lunch mm -hmm. now. I think you're a very good bowler, but mm -hmm. obviously those wickets are so difficult to bowl. And how have you found it playing there? Like, with yeah, your, I when think you're bowling? when I first came, I was more. Um, my first year on loan, first couple of years on loan were basically, uh, I felt like I was a completely different bowler. I was more of a swing bowler. Yeah. Um, which I'm now, I think I'm debating now whether I've made the right decision or not, changing away from, from what I did because I've started to go more like mid to wide crease, trying to nip them back in towards the stumps. Yeah. Um, but I just think. My my strongest asset was swing, and that's the point of difference now. I think I think swings coming back into the game massively, um, as we probably all saw in the the hundred and the T twenty this year. The white ball was swinging much, uh, much more than it used to. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's hard toil. Some days you get them, and it's so low and slow, um, which is annoying. And then I missed the best one this year. We had the hybrid at the start of the year, um, which seems to bounce and carry through and we're, we're all pulling our hair out saying can't we just have this every week please <laughs> it'd be nice um, but now they they can be quite um, they can be quite dead and that obviously then that takes almost everything out of the game because you can't bowl too full because it's the yeah. batters can do what the, whatever they like to it and then also if you bowl too short there's no pace in it really to rush anyone so you've got to actually be you've got to be pretty spot on with your line and length um, I don't think to be fair I think the batters struggle a little bit as well because there's not much pace pace in the wicket um, usually. Um, more of the, in the middle of the summer, I'm more at the start of the year, it's actually usually a decent a decent pitch, which obviously has a bit of carry in there and it doesn't seem to nip as much as, as anywhere else. But I think, yeah, it's, it's tough 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 on the body, but there's, there's ways we, we try and get through it. Um, I think Zaffa played a big part in that over the, over the years. Um, and then, yeah, I think you just go to the classic bounce apply for a few overs just to ruin your body a bit more and then see if they get through that, which they tend to do. <laughs> um, my, my theory, my theory with swing, as a general rule, is the skiddier you are, the more you need to swing it. And I reckon, I reckon um, and that again, that's ve that's different at different grounds. Do you know what I mean? Like you might yeah. bowl at Beckenham, for example. Yeah. Like me, I'd say I'm skiddy. I don't know whether Barts would agree or not. Um yeah. But then all of a sudden you go to Beckenham and there's more bounce. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, you can kind of focus more on, you know what I mean? Seems yeah. more of a thing. Whereas if it's, yeah, I'm trying to think of an example of somewhere that is kind of not necessarily slow, but lower. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps even Grace Road to a degree. I don't know, especially up the hill. I remember you swinging it up the hill, nicking everyone off at Grace Road. I don't know if it was yeah, this year or last like, year. Um, I feel like when we were there early in the year, I bowled, yeah, I bowled nicely there. Then I prefer bowling up the hill, which is, interesting because the lads are like what do you mean like you surely just run down it and it's easier on the body i was like yeah but you get tend to get a bit more bounce and actually i find that it helps me snap through my action a lot more when i'm running running up the hill um i know when i'm not playing for, for gloucester when i play a club team down here there's a big great hill on that and everyone's like oh he's coming down today i was like no i'll be running up it just because i know i have to bowl it i have to snap through yeah. my action and kind of get through it and i think that probably stems from being um, at Yorkshire when I was younger. Um, obviously, training there, it always seemed to be bowling up. Everybody was bowling up the hill. Classes like Yorkshire where yeah, you, you must run up the hill and, and charge in forever. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think that's that's basically what it what it was. And I've always I've always preferred bowling bowling up, up a hill rather than down it. Yeah, Do you know what I will say? I think... 
God. No, 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 I agree. Well, Wrighty gives it now that he likes to bowl up the hill. Trust me, <laughs> when, when it was who's coming down the slope, he was pissed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, being a Yorkie, I feel like if you're a Yorkie, you play cricket, you've kind of got your base covered because if it's just Yorkies, they're just no nonsense. Just get yeah. on with it. Do it. Just bowl. Just bowl and bowl and bowl. And I, that it's almost one argument which you you guys have had before that it, times are changing from that and, and people are like, oh, well, I bowled my form. I'll be all right now. I've got to stop because my GPS says so. Well, I, I, we all we obviously all have to wear them. I'm... I'm one of those who will try and bowl as, as much as possible. I think that's the only way you understand your body, understand your action, improve your action if, if it needs improving. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty pretty down the old school mentality of bowling as much as you can and wearing the big big Asics gel speed many boots from 19, 1912 just to keep your ankles intact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. It's the gold Fair dust enough. though, huh? Gold I, dust together. I've got two in my wardrobe ready for next year, but that's all I've got left. What's your address again? If you, if, <laughs> if you find that they've gone, mate. Yeah, they. It could be. It could no, be. I, actually, I found these ones. I found over. I think it was in Dublin when we we went on preseason tour. And me and Matt Taylor were searching the internet to try and find me some new bowling boots. He said, "Oh, I've got you some here in in Dublin." But then I had to have it pay the import tax. So it was like three hundred quid a pop for one pair. Oh, I was wow. like, it's a nightmare. I used to get Mohammed Abbas to. Because he, he had a contact through playing for Pakistan, he had a contact yeah. to get them in India. Oh. And I reckon he still gets them. He keeps telling me, he tell me there's none left. But yeah. every year he just rocks up with some rocks new ones. New, new pair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's great. Uh, right. So I wanted to ask you, um, here you're a bit of a canny golfer as well. Yeah, I do like, do like my golf, yeah. Um, that'll be me this afternoon, I think. Nice weather. Yeah, me and luckily Hamo, Hamo took it up a couple couple of years ago and he's been non-stop so me and me and him and then uh, another lad called George Scott who used to play for Gloucester so we have a little group chat and we just ping a message on there and get out there whenever we can yeah how long have you uh, played for uh I, I played a little bit as a kid and then stopped kind of probably mid-teens and then uh, probably the last I don't know, last 10 years probably I've got back into it a fair bit but now I, I think it just helps me get away from from cricket really in the summer um I know it's easy, it's a bit easy for me to say, but I think if you're a young player, you've got to find something away from, yeah, away from cricket and away from being in the sports hall on Truman all afternoon. I think get away from it and and hit some hit some golf balls, have a nice walk, um, and then also just other things like I've, I've started doing like a groundsman's course and things like that at my club team down here. They just um, the groundsman literally just lets me go down there and do, do pretty much whatever I want. I think that's good. Though. That's really good. I, I think just stuff like that, just getting away. I, it was more just the social side of it for golf, really. Um, you know, if some of the lads play, um, and then just the trips at the end of the season. It's, it's good crack. It's just nice yeah. to unwind. I mean, it's a decent walk for four hours. Just kind of enjoy a nice feed and maybe a Guinness after. I've, yeah, I mean, I've got also. Um, I've got. A, it could be seen as a bad, but I see it as a funny story. Um, I was, I got told, look, this is years ago, Warwickshire, look, but we're not going to play in the T20 stuff. We've got um, Ricardo Gordon, we've got Ollie Hannon Dolby, and you yourself yeah. and Wright can can rotate and rest. And I was spewing. I wanted to go. I'm like, take. I want to go on loud. Like, you're not going on loud. I'm like, yeah. right, fine. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'm going to learn to play golf. Yeah. But I took it on myself. Got some golf clubs, got all the gear. As a, like, I get into something, I'm like, right, I've got to get certain spikes, I've got to get certain clubs, all that. Yeah. And I started to go to the driving range up near where, um, near where Wrighty used to live, actually. Um, and I, I got a call off my head coach when I know there's a T20 game meant to be played. I just thought there's no way I'm answering this because that means someone's missing somewhere and I, they want me to go and drive to Nottingham to yeah, do 12 yeah. months. You need not to get not doing it. I carry on driving up to the golf to the um, driving range and then rings me, rings me. I'm nah, I'm not. I'm just not. No. I know what I'm not doing it because <laughs> if I do play, I'm going to be out the next game no matter what happens. I'm not. Yeah. Playing. I've been told I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I'm, I'm not playing. And then I get a call from the physio. I'm thinking, okay, this is a bit odd. So I answer it. It's like, oh, um, 
ends up it's the head coach on the physio spawn. So I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, oh uh, yeah, all right. He's like, um, um, where are you? I think, oh no. So um, I, I'm in Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Oxford. Oh, how long do you reckon it take you to get to Nottingham? Um, they were like, such and such. I can't say what's happened, but such and such okay. things happen. This person's gone, um, and one of the other players hasn't arrived yet. I was like, it's going to take me like three and a half hours, I think, something like that. <laughs> right. Um, all right, it's going to be take too long. Um, all right, I'll give Wrighty a call. Right, yeah, no worries. Bye. So I go home. <laughs> I'm like, do you know what? I best not be seen out. Let yeah, me go yeah, home. Yeah, Turn around, yeah. drive home. Stay inside. Curtains closed. Everything. I then put the cricket on later on. Who, who's opening the bowling just for right. the centre? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, you know what? So Clark, he didn't play, did he? For some reason. Yeah. Uh, but you know what was awesome? There was no no warmer. It was like proper. Just, just trying out, to yeah. figure out how to kind of get ready for a professional game with yeah. about 20 minutes prep. It was brilliant. Like, honestly. And actually, Bold, right? He did well. You know, right? he did well. He took, to be fair to you, I, couldn't, I, mean, I could not imagine the other person who didn't get there was Recorder Gordon. Bear in mind, he was meant to play. He didn't get there. Whenever Wrighty left, was there was like an hour before the start of the game. Yeah. Wrighty gets there in 40 minutes. Um, Recorder Gordon, I don't even think, turned up or he turned up after Wrighty. So God knows what happened there. But um, yeah, Wrighty took like two or three wickets. Guess what happens the next game? Who's not playing? Righty. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, that was that was why because I'm saying I had the same dialogue as you. I was like, I want to play every game, whether that's right or wrong. Yeah. So I remember being like, I'll show them. Yeah, I'll go there. And I bowled yeah. really well. It was a short yeah. side to Trent Bridge, nailed my wide hole at Dan Christian, a few wide slowies. Um yeah, yeah. yeah didn't also, mean also I will say at that point, I'm not in a rush to go and open the ball against Alex Hales and Ricky Vessels. No thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's the hiding for nothing, though, that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's just you know. But right, right, it came through. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I can't remember what was going on though, with the game, to be honest. But yeah, yeah, it was a weird, it was a weird, uh, a weird vibe. But um, sorry, I disappeared. By the way, there, what my dog's gone ballistic. I had a tree surgeon turn up. Who I don't know if he's still in my garden. So I apologise if you can hear my dog. Right, he's got a lot of land where he lives. He just. Yeah. He has people. Coming, you know, <laughs> no, I, I really don't. That's that's not what's going on. I think I have a small cherry blossom tree or something that a quote was meant to be done for. So nothing, nothing more than that. But the dog's been a pain, even though he's uh, he's cute. But did what did I miss out on? I heard you talking about golf. Well, we just talked um, about golf, yeah. Um, and you just said about uh, doing stuff to get away from the game. That's also another thing I was going to say is Ashley Giles talked to us about this early on when just turn pro a lot of the younger lads would kind of hang around the indoor after training mm. and just mill around and not do much and then maybe try and have another hit and yeah. he just said to us look he used chris Wilkes as the example bear in mind chris Wilkes is god yeah. he said um look look at someone like Wilkes. He, he comes in does his job gets out don't linger around or go off and enjoy life away from the cricket you'll be playing cricket you'll play cricket long enough do your job get out and I think it's so important, you're right, is to actually find other things to do apart from just cricket. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I, I get there's, the, there's a time and a place for putting the, the extra yards in if you need to, if something's not feeling quite right. But the, the minute you're, you're hitting balls for the sake of it, you're almost defeating the, the object there. Yeah. Just... You just learn bad habits. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm a bit like that, just getting, if we're netting, we're netting, and I'm, I'm taking it serious. I'm, I'm pacing my run up yeah. out and, and flying in. But if not, I'll be. I'm not not training. I'm not. I'm not doing something just to to learn some bad habits like you said. Yeah. Well, we we've we've probably talked about this from a different angle, but we we do. All, I think it seems all of us agree. You should. You need to bowl uh, yeah. to learn about yourself and stuff. However, as you master a skill, probably any skill, you want to become efficient, don't you? And part of being efficient is stripping down all the wasted rubbish, like all the junk volume, where you maybe think you're doing the right thing and you stay for a hit on the bowling machine. Yeah. But it's it's not actually got any real purpose or meaning behind it. Yeah, um, yeah no, I completely agree with you. Completely agree with you guys. It's, one of, it's one of those, but it's quite easy for the batters because they they can. I mean, they just come back, stand there and bat all day, can't they? It's not like they have to snap through the action. Every yeah. time. It's almost like the the physios and SNCs kind of don't like it when you strap the strap the boots on for 
for training or whenever it is. There's obviously the over set amount for a week workload and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a good point. I had a, I had another theory which you may or may not like. I'd be interested to hear what you two think. So uh, I had a stress well I've had stresses in the past. So I tried to get rid of all unnecessary bowling in my warm up which yeah. was interesting because obviously you go through a phase where it's borderline practice. I think that's fair, isn't it? You know, when you're young and you're like, yeah. you are trying yeah. to really find something every warm up, And then you get to a point where you're like, oh God, actually I need to be a bit more uh, mindful about my body. So I would just run up as if I was, um, as if I was bowling, but not actually bowl. So yeah. it was like, oh okay, yeah, I thought that was a nice, nice, uh, nice middle ground. Yeah. Um, so what's that? Get the, just try and get your stripe on almost. And then obviously yeah. not. It's nice to bowl. Fair. So bowl, bowl into the mitt, you know, in the yeah. air, find the wrist and stuff. But obviously not, you're not really bending your back into the floor. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you might do a couple off a short run, just a couple to get kind of the, you know, like almost the trajectory out your hand yeah. and find yeah. the length. But then in terms of running in, mark your run up out and spend a couple of minutes just yeah. running in. Yeah, Done. I think if you've got um, if you've got a body that's quite injury prone, I think. You have to then obviously be quite sensible in what you're doing, and I don't know if you're an out and out first team player and you you're coming back from injury, but got to play two twos games. You're a bit like, well, what's what's the point in that? That's almost wasted wasted overs in the twos when actually I could be out there because I know I'm fit. Um, so surely you want to be yeah you want to be bowling in the actual main main event. Um, but uh, there, there's other people, and I'm included in this that'll just happily bowl <laughs> bowl forever almost. Uh, but it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because a lot of people are different, and some some like to bowl a lot, and some go on what data and what other people tell them. Yeah, on. yeah, I, yeah. I mean, right, you will test this. I was someone, I'm still someone. When it comes to warm ups, I just bowl my yeah. warm up, my bowling, and yeah. I literally do it off one step, then a yeah. slow gradual jog, and it, it takes a while. But yeah. I, I don't, I don't see the point. What I'll do normally. You know, team time will be 10 o'clock. Yeah. And everyone will get together and then do a warm up. I've already had a bowl at about half nine. So I'm already warm. What am I warming up for? I'm yeah. already warm. So my, yeah. my bowling is my warm up. So yeah, yeah I don't yeah. Even... Have you Have you not considered pushing it back, Keith, to after team time? No. No. No, I need to Go get on. the <laughs> system. <laughs> Just get the stiffness out. To start get the going. stiffness out. Bowl like I can need to. Kind of get to pretty much match intensity before ten. O'clock. Yeah, I do get to match intensity before ten. Yeah, uh, and then that bowling afterwards is like a, just a mini top up. Yeah, and, that's it. Mm. and then yeah. then then you drop the painkillers and then you're flying. Then you're flying. You're good to go. That is one thing I find amazing how lads have a net and have a ball, but then you still got to come in and and do a warm up at ten o'clock or nine forty five, whatever it is. It's a bit like, well, I've already, I've just bowled four overs. I'm, I'm, I'm fresh, yeah. ready to go yeah. now. It's Surely an unsold part early. of the game. It, it, yeah. the, the cricket warm up, like for exactly the reason you just said, no one has mastered it because no one has basically got the guts to say, lads, do what you want to do, yeah. provided you warm up before you do it. Yeah, that would be the answer. But then you'd lose the team dynamic and that yeah. kind of. You know the huddle. You wouldn't have yeah. the huddle because you wouldn't have a team yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I'm sure we've all, we all do three warm ups, don't we? Yeah. We do. You do the warm up, then you bowl a bit, yeah. then you do the team warm up. That's your three in, and you've probably done some rolling around in the change room before. So you've probably. Yeah. It's like ah. Oh, no, nobody actually does it when they've been rolled over and there's like four overs left of the session. The physio <laughs> uh, giving you a quick stretch and a run for it. It's like right, lads, go on and crack on. It's yeah. that four hours. <laughs> You, you know what my pet hate actually is you know when you have nets um and it'd be like a 10 o'clock net yeah. is is if mm. people muck about for five minutes before yeah I hate that. yeah so then you've only got 50 minutes or whatever it is it's like yeah that should have been done and equally like once it's 10 o'clock that it should be on you should be lads yeah. running in um that the reality of a game as well isn't it like you don't get to kind of get a feel for the conditions before you actually bowl yeah, when, we, you're, when you're in the middle, you're in the middle. We've got um, some good candidates for that. They just rock up and bowl a few, and then five minutes is already gone. We Richard Dawson brought one in. Who's you know how you start of the year, you have the net schedule and getting ready to bowl. Is I think we had two or three spells in the day, and it was like right lads, you've got no warm up balls in the net. 
So you, you're out here before getting warm, ready to go. And once it's your time, I don't know, say half past 12 for your second spell, that first ball needs to go down with some intent like a game. So that kind of took all the, the nonsense away from it, which was, which was quite good. He'd have, lost, right, lost me. He'd have lost me. He'd have lost me. God, that'd be You wouldn't because you found that you'd find a way to get it down there somewhere near. Mm. Uh, not now. Uh, maybe then, yeah. Not now, though. Not now. <laughs> but you'd find some way of bowling when you go into the mid. Yeah, no. Someone on the side or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, I used to actually Giles used to have an issue with me early on. Uh, <laughs> Because I didn't do warm ups, I literally would avoid warm ups. I like team warm ups would be like, right, high knees, through ladders, blah blah blah, right, seventy five percent side skipping, all this stuff, high knees, and I'd be sat on the floor just stretching my hammies. <laughs> oh, that'd be yeah. But my argument was, how does an essence? How does anyone know what my body's feeling? It needs. Like yeah. I'd be tight my hamstrings, so I was like, well, I need to stretch my hamstrings and my lower back because that's a part of it. But I don't need to do other things. I was quite defiant on this is what I'm doing. And because I was doing all right, I got away with it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, you're accountable, aren't you? Yeah. I quite like the uh, a kind of American vibe towards S&C uh, and warm-ups and stuff. It's very kind of personal, very chilled. I remember watching the Super Bowl, I think it was a few years ago, and Mahomes was warming up. And he just had a big set of beats on and was just yeah. like – throwing a few balls here and there you're like yeah like why are we I feel like we're a bit militant yeah and ultimately if you don't play well and you're not warmed up and prepared then you you shouldn't play yeah i did that again and <clears throat> right dog you'd have, you'd, have, you'd have enjoyed it i bowled with my headphones <laughs> did you what some i some iphone ones yeah yeah in warm-ups iPhone. just did it i think it was just it just felt right it was sunny all four days it was a flat deck and i, I need something to get me going so I just had the headphones on, running into bowl because my my I had I forgot what watch it was, but certain watch it stored my music on, so I was able to run up bowl, listen to some tunes. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did Pop say? He loved it. You know what Pop's like. Pop loves something that's a little bit different. A bit different. Yeah, he actually does. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, I mean, that would I I would quite quite rate that. Yeah. Um, so there's another thing I said to write. I do. I don't know if you. I don't know if I, it was on the podcast or not. I just, I walk a lot of the time, if it's decent weather, I walk onto the pitch for warm ups or like when I'm going to bowl barefoot with my boots and my socks, man, and just walk up to the square, have a look around, and then put my boots on. I, I'd like to just feel like I own it, basically. Nice. <laughs> Gets so me in a good place. Um, Cam Bancroft told a story how Justin Langer used to get their, their boys walking around the outfield the day before barefoot to connect with the ground or something. It was. <laughs> it's a big rogue. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it for that reason. Yeah, I was like, I'm not, I'm not sure I'd be doing it for that. Yeah, no, he's just trying to look cool. Let's not get confused. <laughs> no, he's not grounding. Himself. I'm right. He wishes he had the bottle to do that. Yeah, no, no, I, no. I, yeah, I don't, I don't massively disagree. I would enjoy it. I wouldn't ever do it, but if if I was playing with like a performer who had a bit of swagger, I'd, I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, by the way, if Ben Mike's listening, this is not your cue to put earphones in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that now. <laughs> uh, not yet, not yet. Give it a few years' time, maybe. Give it a bit, give it a bit. That's, yeah. To be fair, that's why Wrighty used to do, try and do some celebrations when we used to play together. He'd try and, like, try and outdo me. He tried to do the Ronaldo celebration and just look like Stevie Wonder playing the piano. It was <laughs> uh, Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that scarred me for life. That I don't really, don't really have any uh, choreographed sellies anymore. The one time I did, well, not even did. I tried, did I replicated this this thing, and everyone said it was a dab, and it wasn't a dab. It was a <laughs> throwback to your Superman from 2012. Yeah, <laughs> and then but we lost the game. Trying, still trying to that. connect. That's 12 years ago. He's still trying that. to connect. Yeah, lost the game, and then Dolivera went. Yeah, like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like. Well, I didn't know we weren't allowed to have fun when we bowled. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's all part of the fun, being a pantomime villain, I suppose, when you're bowling. <laughs> it, but, um, have you talked about Dan Morrill yet, Barks? No, we left it to you. We can. talk about Dan Morrill. Yeah, we can. He's an absolute legend of a bloke. That, I wonder that. how good he. I wonder how good he is and what he's like to play with because we we literally love him. Mm. Yeah, I mean we. I was quite lucky to have him for a couple of years. My first two years 
uh, when I officially signed down here. I think I'll always remember his, his first game, and I, I really hope he listens to this. Um, he he literally got off the flight um, the day before, rocked up for the training day, just kind of jogging through and, and what have you. Um, and then he gets into the game, and it, you know, like lads are marking their run ups out and what have you. I was like, Frankie's not, he's not done his run up. And lads were like, no, nah, he'll have done it, surely he's done it. I was like, no, nah, I can promise you, he's not spray painted where his mark is. So he gets the ball, jet black hair, he's got his fresh dye in his hair, ready to go. Um, and he's just got the ball and turned around in this random spot. So then I'm watching him ball and he's like, balling like 75%. He's like, I don't want to get injured. First game, I just don't want to get injured. So he's just dumbling through at 75%, still swinging around corners and balling pretty quick. And he just, he just keeps turning at different stages. And I was like, Frank, have you got a run-up? He's like, no, I'm just going how my body feels. So he's just <laughs> run up there. Just after a run-up, I was like, this is remarkable. And he's still swinging him and nip, nipping around corners. Um, but I think it was Ryan Higgins who, who actually told him about the wobble ball. He had no idea what the wobble ball was. And Higgo... I think it was, I wasn't actually there for this game, but he, I think it was Sussex away. And he goes, because have you ever tried bowling a wobble seam, Frankie? And he was like, no, not really. Because he obviously has great shape, swings it on this beautiful angle and he's wide of the crease and it's just a thing of beauty. And he's, yeah, he goes just, going, oh, if you just do this with a seam, what have you, and just nip it back, you'll get loads of pulls. Albeit went out there, I, I think he got four or five just bowling, bowling wobble seam because everyone expects him to swing. He's, <laughs> It's just remarkable. Of I mean, we we had one, we had a cut more than one glimpse of him, but he bought one amazing spell. We were against Somerset at Bristol um, the year before he left, and that was seriously quick pace with swing. Um, it was like, it was just like test level stuff. He flying through to the keeper. Everybody else was almost two bounces to the keeper, and he was just kissing the deck beautifully. And Bracey was taking it up up around his ears. It was it was great. Great to watch, but he's yeah, he's just down to earth, and I think he's a bit old school. He'll he'll bowl a lot if you need him to bowl a lot, but also he'll he'll find a way to get away from the game if if he needs to. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I was I was quite lucky to have him really for for my bowling at the time, which was swing bowling then, and to be able to speak to him um, was was pretty amazing. I think he made the right call moving to Surrey as well. Just I think some somehow instead of joining instead of joining us. Well, I mean, sorry, that's a it's a great coup for sorry. I know Alex Stewart. There's an article on Quick Info now, I think, uh, and Alex Stewart is talking about a bit about Graham Thorpe, mm. but he's also talking about no, it's on the in the Telegraph. You saw him out, uh, Warrell being the best bowler in the country, yeah. which yeah, we've been saying this, we've been saying this for a while, Keith, haven't we? Yeah, by far, by far, he's a, he's a wizard with that. Well, even with the white ball at the top, he's just. Remarkable. You see how they're playing him in the hundred. It was almost like, all right, let's just get him through his ten, and then he has to stop bowling, and we'll go, we'll go after the rest almost. Yeah. Uh, do you do you remember a few years ago at Bristol? Um, there was a game that Gloucester beat Leicestershire, where he kind of. I remember I, I was I nearly had to bat. I think in the second innings, and we were trying to sort of declare. He just started bowling rapid at their back yeah. end of the day. I remember being like, "What the hell is going on?" It was like properly, properly quick. Know- just out of yeah. nowhere. Like, and he'd just shape up the new ball, like not yeah. be within himself. And then he'd just go, you know, and they go two gears up here and yeah. bowl bombs. He, um, I mean, it's amazing how he can do it. Just literally almost flick a switch. He'd still be bowling amazingly well in 75%, but then when he wanted to to flick a switch and, and crank it up, I mean, he, he could crank it up pretty quick. Um, but yeah, we, we were very lucky to have him me personally at the time and some of the other younger bowlers at the time to have somebody around like that and and now especially I mean Payne has always been great to to all of us but to have Payne been able to ask him any sort of question you need is is great I mean obviously you boys will have had it as well when you you were younger coming through you had people you looked up to and maybe not in your team but elsewhere but I think being when I was certainly younger, being a bit scared to ask like Brezzy and, and people like that questions and side bottom. I think looking back when you eventually do actually ask the question, I mean, the, everyone's got time for you, haven't they? Which, which mm. is a great, great asset that Frankie definitely had. And he, yeah, he taught me a few things, which, which I'll definitely, hopefully one day master, hopefully. I, I, yeah. 
coming on to yourself because we talked about wall and stuff can you answer what type of bowler do you think you are uh, I'm a I, I'm a swing bowler, but I've moved I moved away from that a couple of years ago, which I think I'm looking back on now that probably wasn't the right call for me personally. I think, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a swing bowler who then can nip nip it back. Yeah. Do you, what else do you offer? Do you feel? I'm I'm I'm, I'm probing questions because I I, w- I want to just see what your thoughts are overall as a bowler. What you have to offer? What you bring to uh, a bowler? I feel like I've got a bit of pace to offer, um, but yeah, mainly swing bowler who, yeah, who can also be used in little short bursts, which is, doesn't really happen at Bristol these days, really, just because it's so low and slow. Um, but yeah, I think I probably, I don't know, my stats probably don't suggest that I'd be able to control it, but I know, I know that I can better than what what I have done over the last couple of years, which has been the frustrating part. Um, but yeah, I think T, T20 as well, I think that uh, that's almost overtaken a little bit of the red ball stuff, um, yeah. which, which probably was a surprise really that at the start of the year, probably looking at it thinking, oh, I might not play. And then we, we got Bo Webster and I was kind of like, that's probably my spot that's gone, although he's the all rounder. He's always, he's probably also going to bowl my, my sets there. Um, but then, Lucky enough to get in, get in there and do quite well. How many? What's uh, just from a Red Bull perspective? What's the most wicket you've taken in a season? Uh, be <laughs> 30, 35, 36, More than, basically my first year, I think. And was that playing all games? I played every game that season. Yeah. Do you feel that you're uh, at your peak yet, or do you feel that you've got more to give? No, I reckon there's a lot, yeah, a lot more because I'm not. I've hardly played like I played. What did I play? Like three games this year, four day cricket, um, which is obviously frustrating because you just. I know everybody's like, oh, you can't play every game, but every, I think everybody wants to play every game, don't they? It's not like yeah. uh, you're getting rotated, but if, if you're getting rotated, I'm still pretty sacked off that I'm I'm not playing. I'm not able to to be out there with the team. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot a lot more to to come. Hopefully and. Hopefully next year, especially Red Bull. I think uh, Red Bull would be my favourite format. Weirdly, just because you, for four days, you've got to be trucking in and working very hard to get a win. And when you get a four day win, there's nothing, nothing quite like it. Yeah. Um, so I ask you these questions because I feel like you've got a lot more to to give, mm-hmm. um, and you probably haven't. Maybe it's because of the wicket. You haven't got the credit you deserve on how you've gone and how you bowl and stuff. But I feel you've got a lot to offer, and there's yeah. a few things I think you can work on personally. And this mm-hmm. is not to do with your bowling. This is more about what you're showing. Um, mm-hmm. which I'll talk to you about <laughs> after. I'm not talk about it now. I'll talk to you about afterwards. Yeah. Um, but I do reckon there's a one real big key of information I give you to take more wickets, more wickets than you have done before in red ball cricket, and that's not play. <laughs> At that ground that you play, <laughs> find another club. I wonder find what was going to come then. I, I felt like I was in an interview or something, and then he's just, yeah, he's cracked me up. Yeah, I mean, I wonder it, what was going on. It's no, not easy. Sure. Being, being honest, I think you've got a lot, hell of a lot to offer. Mm. I feel like you've yourself, I don't think you probably give yourself enough credit. I feel that you've got, I feel you've got another gear in you, and you, mm. there's other stuff, I think, not just from skill set that you can offer, which I think will buy you some wickets. Yeah. Uh, but I, I will talk about one or two things afterwards to you um okay. yeah because i look at the bowling tag gloucester have got a very good bowling tag i can't if you name for me the bowlers you've got that in the red ball stuff you've got a jeet uh, you've got a jeet zaman Akhtar, matt taylor goodman myself tom price um luke oh, Charles, um ben charles <laughs> when fit to bowl um Archie Bailey, who played uh, this year, made his debut. So um, we've, we've got a decent um, attack of bowlers. I think the I think the start of the year we were the what was it, the, we got these pace things through. I think we were number one for m- the most pace in in the country, which obviously is is amazing, like pretty special to have that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think fighting fighting your way in there. I think obviously they've they've gone on and doing well, and it's now just booting the door down, isn't it? You've you've got to find yeah. a way. Have been able to get back in there. Yeah, is, um, is Bristol the sort of ground where they could help you guys a bit more? 
Or is it always fundamentally low and slow? Or uh, could they, could they, is there anything they can do? Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> like you say, it's a quick attack. So like something yeah. a bit harder and greener would be ideal. Well, we asked, we asked for a spinner the last game at home, I think it was against Sussex. And it was, yeah, it was carrying through nicely and it wasn't very low and wasn't spinning that much, I don't think. So it was a bit like, maybe we have to ask for a spinner every week. So hopefully we get that. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's only been... Really, my first couple of years when I was there, there was always a bit of life in it and there was a bit of juice around it. Um, but the last couple of years, yeah, there just seems to be a bit lower and slower. I think a lot of teams are worrying about bonus points and batting points, aren't they? And I think that's that's not helping the themers really. When actually, if you're winning games, does it really matter? If you, Yeah, it's obviously great to pick up the bonus points, but if you're winning games, nobody can really complain, can they really? I don't think. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of other stuff, isn't there? Like the ECB, yeah. I think fundamentally yeah. they want flatter services, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, and kookaburras I mean, and stuff. I'd, well, I, hopefully there's not many of those things around next year for the, the kookaburra. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Keith, you're smiling. What do you know? Have you heard me? No, more? I'm, just, I'm just thinking kookaburra at Bristol. No, thanks. <laughs> well, we got lucky. We had Yorkshire the first game. So luckily there was a bit, a bit about it. And then I, I think... The two at the end were both away, I believe, or one of them, or one of them might have been the hybrid game that got abandoned. I can't remember. But yeah, I I played the home game, but that's it with the Cookerbra this year, thankfully. But for uh, I think from what I've heard, there may be more in the future. There may be more games. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> just a few, just a, just a few more flat ones, Josh. Be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or abandoned pitch again. Yeah, that'd be good stuff. Yeah. What? How bad was that pitch, by the way? Well, I mean, I missed a lot of that. So, um, so my sister decides to get married during the cricket season, which is always good, isn't it? That uh, your brother can't attend the wedding. Yeah. But luckily, I didn't actually play. So I was driving home, and Matt Taylor pinged me a text. He went, "This game's going to get abandoned," and I've just like sort of looked at. It. I was like, "What do you mean?" He was like, "The wicket, like they've come off and said it's dangerous," and I was like, "It can't be that bad, can it?" But apparently, as it goes, apparently it wasn't actually that bad, and it's kind of just. They've, well, the lads think they've gone a bit over the top about it all, but I mean, mm. some of the videos didn't look amazing. Um, I mean, there's a few that kind of reared off back of a length and, and hit their gloves and stuff. But apparently, yeah, the, the lads thought it wasn't wasn't too bad. But I mean, I, I wasn't there to to judge it as I was flying up the the M1 to, to Skipton somewhere for my sister's wedding. So we we had we had one game years ago. We just be, we play we played a game county game. And then we were playing Sussex the week after, and we'd heard Sussex's pitch was a bit dodgy. Yeah. Um, we we they played Middlesex, I think, and it it was quite dangerous. So then we rocked up, and it didn't look <laughs> didn't look great. Uh, I think it was really sunny. And yeah. We had a phone uh, call in the car. We were sharing a lift down there, and Dougie Brown, the head coach, yeah. rang us up and was like, "I'm not gonna do his accent because I'll get it wrong." But he was like. The wicket's really dry and cracked, but it's really green. And we were like, what? Like, that doesn't yeah. sound that like... Sense. Yeah. And basically, they left a wicket cracked and covered in plates. They left grass on it to try and hold it together. Yeah. Mm. And it was it was lethal. I, that, and that's why I, that, that, it looked worse. For me, it was worse than what I saw on the video of your, yeah. of your game. It was up and down. And sideways, was it like getting quick, hit? Quick deck or not? Yeah, they, yeah, had, they had Hobden Jordan. Oh, they had Hobden Jordan. Uh, it was like I got hit. On the, I got yeah. a scar on my chin from it somewhere. So, it. Like, basically, we were going to, we were going to bat first. It was so sunny the first day. Yeah. Really nice. We walked in right. He loves it. It's his favourite place to play. Yeah. Um, and we we tossed up, and it's like right, lads, we're batting. Right, brilliant. And as the batters went out, it was just like sea mist to start oh, with. Oh. Oh, anything. And then it was the most dangerous wicket I've ever played on. By four, I've ever seen. Right, yeah. right, he got one off a length off McGoffin, didn't you? In the, yeah, in so the gym. I, I got one. I, no, I got a bouncer. So I went in at three I, uh, because one of the batters was like, let's not reverse the order, but let's try let's have something. A look. So I went in at three. McGoffin bowled a bumper. Yeah, and I ducked, and it just basically rolled along the floor, and hit me in the chin. In the chin. And then he rolled me a bumper neck ball, which I went. Yeah. And I remember, and I wouldn't often, I wouldn't 
often ever feel like this. I remember feeling actually genuinely scared after the yeah. second one because yeah. I was a bit shook up. And it was this was before the days of like head, you know, yeah, checking yeah, yeah, yeah. touchings and stuff. Yeah. So I, I had like I literally had blood all blood all over my shirt. Kept thought I'm gonna be a tough guy and keep batting. And yeah. then pretty much shat myself the next ball because the bumper yeah. actually went through quite quick. Through. And I was yeah. like, I don't want to be here. Yeah, I, I felt yeah, like really, yeah. really worried. I think West Ian Westwood broke his hand, didn't he as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then he tried to bat through it, didn't he? Uh, Ambi got hit on the helmet, cutting. So he went to cut it, yeah. and it nipped back off a crack and hit him in the bounce. Um, yeah. The only person that did well was Ben Brown, but he did not even try and play proper cricket, did he? He played French yeah. cricket, basically. Yeah. And like, well, he doesn't yeah. respond at the best of times, does he? He just well. <laughs> dumps <shoulder. laughs> Good, yeah. Yeah, right. That's taking the real life net testers into a different level. Like the bowlers always get lobbed in first, don't they? In the nets. <laughs> Come on, lads, just, just see how they are. Well, that's, oh, a good idea. That. Yeah, yeah. that's a good yeah. idea, isn't it, lads? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Been there before. yeah. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Um, right, how, how are we doing, lads? Because we've, we've been on for over oh, an hour here. So I think yeah, we, we probably should think about wrapping it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks very much for your time. Josh, what? Well, by the way, do people call you Shory or Showy? We, I've had uh, yeah, either, either of the all. I can't say Shory, Shory, Shory like Bucker, Ed, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, it's like Ed Barnes. I've got Ed Barnes in my head. I'm like, I feel like he always calls you Showy, and I'm like, that's yeah. what's that? Yeah. It changes um, the further south I get to up north. It changes a lot. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Well, look, thanks very much for your time, mate. Um, we appreciate you coming on. Hopefully, you've had fun. Um, yes. and hopefully listeners you got some good value from that um and yeah if you if you enjoy the episodes please give us reviews uh like follow and subscribe and all that kind of cool cool stuff um all right we'll leave it there take it easy everyone yes, thank you thank you